I guaranteed a Rockies home run. You know, they scored, they've hit a home run in 10 consecutive games. How they put up 13 runs tonight without knocking a ball over the fence is beyond me. So I'm ready for my... You know, with Rodrigo Lopez and Jason Hirsch on the disabled list, the Rockies knew that they had to make some sort of move. As the only team in the NL West cannot make a trade during before the trade deadline, the Rockies ushered in the Ubaldo Jimenez era. You know, the Rockies knew what they were getting when they promoted this guy physically. That's a baseball player and a pitcher with an amazing arm and a world of talent. What they didn't know what they were going to get when Ubaldo came to this level is what kind of head he would have on his shoulders, how he would handle the transition to the major league game. Fortunate enough to play this game, and I have a hard time believing why or how the Rockies can be struggling this bad on the road. When we played, you know, the road was the best place to go to kind of get away, to keep to yourself, to be able to blend and have chemistry with your teammates. When you're home, you've got your family, you've got your wife, you've got your kids, you've got to get showered, you've got to get out of there. But when you're on the road, you get a chance to, you, there's no hurry. You can just sit there in your underwear, drink a few beers, and talk <laughs> about baseball. That's what, that's what baseball players love doing more than yeah. anything, is sitting around and talking about baseball. Yeah. That's just it. It seems to be feast or famine right there. It'd be nice to have the offense kick it up a notch a little bit, so that takes a lot of pressure off the pitching itself right there. And for Glendon Rush, he needs to go deeper into the ball games than he usually does. Maybe get seven innings out of him tonight. Yesterday with a doubleheader, the relievers threw seven and two-thirds innings. They'll be nice for Brendan to go a little deeper. We've got the Brewers right now. They've got a pretty good offense. We're going to talk about them in a little bit, but what do they do? They go out and get somebody to help shore up their defense. Now, the Brewers have outscored their opponents only by 12 runs this year, as opposed to the Cubs, who have outscored their opponents 102 runs. So, you know what? You're not going to probably catch them in offense, so go out and get somebody to shore up that defense every five days. Hey, Huey, I want to take you back to the bottom of the third inning. Matt Kane on the mound for the Giants looked unhittable, untouchable for the first two <laughs> innings. Gives up a couple of runs in the bottom of the third. Then the two-run uh, two uh, base hit by Brad Hopp there. Next thing you know, Bocce's coming to the mound. Yanks his starter. I thought a little bit too soon. Matt only had 69 pitches. Through, yes, he did through 44 in the third innings, but here's a guy who's established himself in the rotation this year. If he was a young kid, a rookie coming up with the expanded rosters, you would expect this. But I thought that was highly unlikely to have uh, Bocce come get Kane that early in the ballgame. Well, they never feel like they're out of it. 40 come from behind wins now. I think they're tied for the lead with Philadelphia. So, you know what? And they, and they couldn't have picked a better time to come back from behind. This was a must win. It's a must win tomorrow, and it's really almost a must win on, for the rest of the schedule. Well, Mark, it's just the two of us. We could, could talk. We could talk robots. We could talk 80s <laughs> hair bands. But you want to talk Rockies baseball? We'll uh, talk yeah. Rockies baseball. This is a show that luckily we did not have to do at all last year. That's a show where we kind of throw in the white flag a little bit, start talking about what the Rockies need to do for 9 They've got a lot of young talent that hopefully the Rockies are going to be able to showcase and get a good feel for uh, coming into the 9 season. But I tell you what, it's really Troy Tulowitzki. What he's done over at shortstop as a rookie starting at the most demanding position on the field, he truly is... You know, the biggest surprise of the season, and the Rockies, I'm sure, could not be happier with what they have over at shortstop. And this is what they really need to do. 31 games remaining. Yes, their odds of making the postseason are slim, but they need to stay positive, and here's why. They've got a lot of young guys coming up when the rosters expand who will be very excited to play for the National League defending champions. They want to come up and have a great positive experience, and the Rockies are on their way to providing that for them. Hey, George, Aaron Cook starts the game tonight. Doesn't really have the outcome that he likes. You know, he's a guy that really likes to pitch to contact, really challenges himself to get guys out in three pitches or less. You know, conversely, he has that great sinker. Everybody in baseball knows that. And you kind of live by the sinker, die by the sinker. That's really what happened tonight. Not a lot of balls hit hard. Cincinnati just did what they do, hit it where they ain't. Yeah, you know, anytime <laughs> you take one to the home entertainment center, that's going to put a little bit of a delay in the ball game here. I said two hours and ten minutes. I like the way things shook up here tonight. Aaron Cook gets a lot of ground balls like we talked about a minute ago. We got a lot of ground balls, but a lot of them got through there. So... Here's what the real problem is. These guys were kind of taking their time, getting to home plate. You know, look at look at this. Come on, let's go. Look at oh my goodness. See, this is this is this isn't even slow-mo right here.